Hi guys, uh, Dane without a tripod today, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Julius Caesar by William Shakespeare. This is the stunning Folio Society edition, so it's got these incredible illustrations here. Um, and yeah, this is the 1962 edition. I have no blurb for this, so as always, I'm just going to go through and look at my tabs and share my overall thoughts and ratings at the end. Um, obviously, it's difficult to... Um, really talk about it too much in a way because you'd really want to go and see a performance of it. Uh, I'm going to start here with the um, introductory essay. So I really thought this little couple, couple paragraphs here were interesting so I'm going to read them out. It has been said that most of the Christian characters in The Merchant of Venice are unpleasant or stupid. Bassanio is a sponger and a fortune hunter. Antonio a homosexual boar. Graciano a foul-mouthed Jew baiter. Lorenzo a seducer and a thief. Launcelot Gobbo, a promiscuous glutton, the Prince of Aragon, a nitwit, and the Duke of Venice, a halfwit. These defects of character can all be supported by indications in the text, but it would be a foolhardy producer who decided on a production of The Merchant of Venice, which stressed the despicable traits in the Christians to an extent that was not intended by the author, and who stirred up in his audience a feeling of contempt and hatred for them. The truth is, of course, that Shakespeare created human beings in his plays, not conventional stage puppets, and being human, they have their faults as well as their virtues. That applies equally to the characters in Julius Caesar. I must confess that personally, I hate the conspirators and am entirely on the side of Caesar and Antony. Brutus appears to be positively in love with his honour, but frankly, I cannot see that virtue in his nature. To begin with, he allows the bitter and prejudiced Cassius to abuse Caesar, his avowed friend, in the most futile way. Not even the most critical of British generals would, I think, question the greatness of Sir Winston Churchill because he had once had to give Churchill a helping hand when they were swimming together, or because Sir Winston, during one of his campaigns, had contracted malaria and asked in a weak voice for something to drink. I thought this was really interesting as well. Um, he says, Is it not also the height of irony that Caesar, who had the practical ability to evolve the calendar in approximately the form in which it is still used today, should be murdered by a man who is so vague that he thinks it is the 1st of March when it in fact is the 15th? And he says here as well, Brutus' wife, Portia, is an absurd neurotic, wounding herself to prove her constancy, hysterically almost giving away the conspirators' plan to assassinate Caesar, and finally committing suicide for no reason except that her husband has gone to the wars. And I really like this as well, I think this is a great point. It says, uh, there is no hero, there is no hero and no villain, and if, when I produced Julius Caesar, I had allowed my dislike of the conspirators to upset the balance that Shakespeare had so subtly achieved, it would have been wrong and would have interfered with the audience's understanding of the play. Ideally, a production of Julius Caesar should be followed the next evening by Antony and Cleopatra. Then I think one would realise the full scope of Shakespeare's intention. So that's what I wanted to highlight there. That's by uh, Glenn Byam Shaw, and as you can tell, he was one of the guys who staged it. And this awesome illustration here of Caesar. And as uh, Caesar says, cowards die many times before their death. The valiant never taste of death but once. And that just reminds me of the George R.R. R. Martin quote where he says, A reader lives a thousand lives, the man who never reads lives only once. I wonder if that's where he sort of got the idea from. Calpurnia has a bad dream as well, which is almost like an omen and Caesar doesn't listen. There's another great shot of him, or illustration should I say. This wasn't a photo. And then um, I enjoy this. Uh, this is Antony's speech after Caesar's dead. And uh, it's quite a famous one, I'm going to read it out to you. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is oft interred with their bones. So let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus hath told you Caesar was ambitious. If it were so, it was a grievous fault, and grievously hath Caesar answered it. Here, under leave of Brutus and the rest, for Brutus is an honourable man, so, that, so are they all, all honourable men. Come I to speak in Caesar's funeral. He was my friend, faithful and just to me. But Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honourable man. He hath brought many captives home to Rome, whose ransoms did the general's coffers fill. Did this in Caesar seem ambitious? When that the poor have cried, Caesar hath wept. Ambition should be made of sterner stuff. Yet Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honourable man. You all did see that on the Lupercal I thrice presented him a kingly crown, which he did thrice refuse. Was this ambition? Yet Brutus says he was ambitious, and sure he is an honourable man. I speak not to disprove what Brutus spoke, but here I am to speak what I do know. You all did love him once, not without cause. What cause withhold ye then to mourn for him? Old judgment, thou art fled to brutish beasts, and men have lost their reason. Bear with me, my heart is in the coffin there with Caesar, and I must pause till it come back to me. Just beautiful. And then there's another thing of uh, Caesar here. So yeah, 
all in all, I mean, I've really been looking forward to reading this for a while now, and so it's great to tick it off. Um, I'm fascinated by Caesar in general. I do enjoy uh, the odd bit of Shakespeare. I think Antony and Cleopatra is my favourite of the two, but I would really like to do what they suggested in that introduction and see Julius Caesar one night and Antony and Cleopatra the next. Uh, overall, though, I did enjoy it, and I gave it a four out of five. So there we have it, that's what I made of Julius Caesar by William Shakespeare. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this, if you've read this or seen the play, etc. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.